James. Well, so we're going back to Parliament. Uh, where is... Um and we've seen some really interesting things happen in the, over the last several weeks here. Um, number one, I think, is uh, this fight between the RBA and the government on inflation, on interest rates, and this narrative of government spending. What sort of narrative can we expect as the government returns to Parliament this week uh, about the way their irresponsible spending is driving up inflation? We've just seen another gift to another sector in the child care sector with, a, I think, a 10 percent um, wage, 15 percent uh, wage gift with no productivity increase. At some point, when is the government going to acknowledge that it's making the problem worse? Well, I, I don't think you're going to see that at all from this government, James. Uh, if you believe in double speak, aka 1984 style, this government's <laughs> got it in spades. They ignore the laws of physics, which haven't changed just because they got into parliament and the laws of economics, which have underpinned uh, the way the market has worked uh, for centuries. And, and that continues. So what I think we're dangerously seeing is the RBA versus the Treasury versus Jim Chalmers. And the RBA won't be, I don't believe, won't be influenced by the Labor Party or the Treasurer's pleading or begging or false economics. The reality is, Michelle Bullock couldn't have been clearer, state and federal Labor government's spending has made the economy hot. And that means inflation's going to stay higher than it needs to be for longer, and it's Australians who are paying the cost. And no matter how often Albo and Jim say that's not the case, doesn't change the facts. Uh, and I think you're seeing it on the, in the suburbs, uh, right around our country, that people are struggling with their mortgages. And the RBA will not be bringing those interest rates down until it can have some confidence that the government will get its spending under control. Now, Bridget, you can look forward to the Greens uh, urging the Albanese government this week to <laughs> uh, put targeted sanctions against Israel, condemn the Netanyahu mm. uh, government, all sorts of other measures that they want uh, the Albanese government to meet. How is that going to go? Because we know Labor are compromised on this issue. Uh, they have been all over the shop. They've shown little moral clarity how are they going to cope with this new green assault on this issue? Well, I think they're going to have their usual flaccid response. I mean, these guys don't know up from down. They don't know ally from foe. Uh, and they're actually really challenged, particularly in the Senate, uh, where the Greens do have uh, significant numbers and can really determine whether legislation passes or not. You can see Penny Wong as the leader of the government in the Senate get quite worked up each and every time uh, the Greens put one of these kind of wedging motions on the table. Uh, and I think they're going to be similarly challenged again. Mm. At the end of the day, leadership is about doing the right thing despite uh, the protestations and the angst around you. It is standing firm in the face of challenges. And every single time a challenge is put forward um, but it, you know, to this government, they fall flat and can't seem to recognise that you have to stand for something. And I think you're seeing that in the polls. The Australian government knows that these guys aren't on the Australian people's side. They're simply on the side of winning seats, particularly in this case with the Israel issue in Western Sydney and protecting some of those ministers who have significant Islamic populations in their electorates. Uh, Bridget, I also wanted to ask you, we had last week on the show Willie Packer, one of the investors in the Jabaluka uranium mine up there uh, near Kakadu. Uh, at the Gama Festival, Anthony Albanese made a song and dance about how the future for Indigenous Australians would be based entirely on renewables and uh, basically uh, climate technology. At the same time, he shut down Jabaluka, which was a surefire investment worth billions of dollars potentially to Australian investors and taxpayers. Um, what do you make of Albanese's... Do you think the future for Indigenous Australians is renewables only, as he claims? Well, I think this is a classic case of 21st century colonialism. Uh, you know, you can have the glass beads, not the mirrors. <laughs> it's yes. just insane. 
absolutely insane. We want to see economic empowerment, particularly for marginalised Indigenous Australians, and that means all options on the table to actually grow well-paying jobs uh, in the Northern Territory. And that's exactly... The government is now wanting to shut those opportunities down, and we know Australia's uranium is going to power progress over this century, particularly as the world is seeking to triple its net-zero nuclear um, energy production over coming decades. So it should be a bright future for Jabaluka and the Territory uranium deposits. Instead, uh, once again, Albo is picking ideology over practical solutions that will actually help people.